Do you ever get overwhelmed during coding? Hey, what's up everybody? This episode, I'm gonna be answering some of you guys' questions about data structures and algorithms, but you guys are actually really terrible at asking questions because I got all kinds of questions. So we might go a little bit off the track, but let's just start with some data structures and algorithm stuff and see where this goes. Most of these questions come from my Instagram, so you can follow me there at Caleb Curry. The first one here is what is insertion sort? So there's a ton of sorting algorithms out there and one of them is known as insertion sort. So let's just imagine we have an array and this sorting algorithm will use one side of the array as the sorted part. When this is done, it's known as an in-place algorithm. And the way it works is it'll look at one element, starting with the first element, and just say, hey, this one is sorted. Then it'll look at the second element and see if it is less than that original element. If it is, it'll put it behind it. For that third element, it actually has to check two other elements, and it will fit where it is less than one and greater than the other. So it's basically going to sort the entire array one element at a time. This is an interesting way of sorting because each time you grab an element to put it in the sorted section of the array, you pretty much have to iterate through that sorted array. So this is actually an n squared time complexity sorting algorithm. There are other algorithms out there, but this is one of the easiest to implement and it should work fine for small data sets. Next question is, will you teach data structures in C++? Now I've actually been asked this a lot. I have a huge C++ community following me and I actually decided I'm gonna be doing most of my data structure and algorithms teaching in Python. It is fairly easy to take algorithms and data structures for a different language and apply them to C++. And Python actually has some things in common with C++ such as multiple inheritance. So it might not be that bad to watch some of the Python videos and apply them to your C++ programming. And pretty much any time I've been teaching these data structures and algorithms, I teach them in such a way that it'll apply to any programming language. I primarily want to teach you guys the core of whatever it is we're talking about. And if you haven't tried Python, I would encourage you to give it a shot. It's a really easy language to pick up, especially if you have experience in other programming languages, including C++. This one is not really related, but sort of related, and that is, did I like calculus in college? Well, this is an interesting subject. When I first started calculus, it was a living nightmare, and I actually got tutoring pretty much my entire undergraduate program. I had a great friend who was good at math who helped me out, pretty much on all my homework assignments. Now, I did them myself, but he did help me learn the material, and this was tremendously helpful. And once I started to understand the material, I was like, hey, this ain't so bad. It's kind of fun, even. At first, I wasn't a huge fan, and once I actually understood what we were trying to do, the reason behind it, then I started to enjoy calculus. And you might be wondering, do you have to know a lot of math to be able to do data structures and algorithms? And I would argue that to have a pretty decent understanding of data structures and algorithms, you do not have to have a lot of math. In fact, the series I'm doing on data structures and algorithms right now uses very little math. We might get into some, but it's definitely not an essential component to learning the basics. Now this one is an interesting question, and this will come in handy with data structures. Do you visualize in your head or prefer drawing code structure? A little bit of both, mainly because I can't always write, so if I'm at home or I'm walking, I will just think through stuff in my head, but I find it really hard to actually grasp a concept just by thinking through it enough. I actually will usually have to write it down, and I really, really enjoy writing things down on paper, or as you might guess, a chalkboard or a whiteboard. This is just like the perfect way to learn, and then when I'm done, I'll just erase the chalkboard. And the reason I erase it and I don't keep a bunch of notes is because I'm trying to make things a little bit more permanent in my brain. I don't necessarily want to have to rely on notes. I do use notes for my videos, but when I'm learning concepts myself, I like to be able to understand it in such a way I can explain it by writing it out and then I erase it and sometimes I'll do it again a second or third time just to make sure I really understand the concepts. And when I do this, I'll try to go through some examples, follow the code line by line. What is your major? Well, I actually graduated, believe it or not, and my major was computer science. I love this stuff, it's fun, yeah, it can give me a headache and kind of be a living nightmare sometimes. However, again, once you start understanding things, it actually becomes fun. Am I the only one who hates tree data structures? Um, I highly doubt you're the only one because I posted an introduction to data structures video on here and about every single comment was, 
this has been so stressful for me in school or I'm starting this class and I don't understand any of it and this video has been helpful. So I get the impression of all the topics I've talked about on this channel, data structures and algorithms is one people are the least likely to just grasp immediately. And because of that, a lot of people just hate studying it. So you're not the only one who hates data structures or specifically tree data structures. However, I'm gonna to try to break this stuff down to make it enjoyable. So be sure to check out my data structures and algorithms playlist because that's going to, uh, you know, try to make it enjoyable. What field are you really interested in? Honestly, I have no idea. My interest changes about every two weeks. And I, uh, I struggle with that because I feel like I'm just kind of a generalist. And right now I'm trying to specialize and get really good at these data structures and also get really good at Python. However, I don't know where I see myself in five years. I guess we'll find out. How can I become a better developer? Well, my opinion is always to focus on the stuff that is going to advance your knowledge. So avoid spending too much time learning things that are going to be outdated and instead focus on the principles. I've taught a lot of different programming languages here on my channel, but the reality is 50 to 70% of the content is pretty much the same. That's because I tried to focus on the concepts that would translate from language to language. And I would say that helps me be a better developer. Instead of just spending all of my time on React.js or something, something that we don't know if it'll exist in five years, that's dangerous. Instead, learn the JavaScript programming language or learn really in-depth Python or really in-depth data structures and algorithms. Anything that can help you advance your knowledge and not just stuff that may or may not be useful in a few years. Can you recommend some good books for data structures and algorithms? Uh, I don't really know for data structures, but because algorithms and data structures are so closely paired, an algorithms book will probably touch on a lot of that stuff as well. And that is Algorithms for Professionals. You can just look it up, it's a free PDF. It's basically a compilation of a bunch of stuff from Stack Overflow. It's actually really awesome. That's the book I've been using to reference or learn some new material, so highly recommend it. And can you believe that? I'm not even giving you guys an Amazon affiliate link. That's because I had a data structures and algorithms book and I just did not feel like it was the best way to learn this material. Especially if you're having a book where it indexes everything from one, like the book I was reading, it gets really confusing when you try to actually implement that stuff in a programming language. Will you do an advanced Python guide? Sorry for bad English. First off, your English is better than most people's. And also, I intend on doing some more advanced Python videos. We just released a beginner Python series. That's gonna give you the basics of programming. And now I'm kind of in the, the normal programming. So not beginner, but just average or intermediate. And that is just called Python programming. I'm releasing those day by day here. And after that, we'll see if we get into advanced topics but some of the more advanced topics will be used in this data structures series because that's the language I'm gonna be using for a lot of this content. Are JavaScript algorithms important in web development? This is actually a really, really good question. One of the best ones I had, so good job. <laughs> I would say that they could be important, but most likely any heavy duty processing of data is going to be done on the back end. So unless you're specifically asking about JavaScript Node.js, then I would say probably not. You're probably not gonna have to do a bunch of heavy duty sorting or searching all in a front end application. Instead, that processing will likely be done on the server side and that data will just be sent to a front end application. So if you are primarily learning Angular or React.js or just web development, the front end, then I would say data and structures and algorithms are probably less important. You'll probably be spending more time scratching your head how to figure out how to move a box over here instead of over here, then how to sort an unsorted array. That being said, if you're using JavaScript on the back end for a very data heavy application, then there is a real likelihood you'll need to know some data structures and algorithms. What do you recommend a student study for one month free time? I'm majoring in software engineering. So this is actually really good. And if you had a month of time, I would suggest to start building a portfolio. So that might involve building a little website or it might just be building an application and putting that code up on GitHub. I would make it project oriented. So whether that's applying some data structures and algorithms, or if it's just building a website, whatever it might be, spend that month to actually put something on your resume. What programming language was your first? I'm embarrassed to say this, not as playing guys. It was PHP and that really pushed me into the web development field, which I then learned a little bit about JavaScript. And then eventually I did backend development with C-sharp. 
keep going on in time and now I am focusing on Python and I would say those languages are primarily behind me. Did you learn front or back end first? Well, absolutely first I learned HTML and some CSS. However, I didn't really think that I became a developer until I started learning some of the programming languages. And then I felt like, hey, I need to go back to the front end stuff and really learn it. So when I first started, I was just tinkering with HTML, CSS, and then I really got excited about things when I started learning programming languages. Which is interesting because when I was learning HTML and CSS, I was actually a little bit scared to learn the programming languages and I put it off way too long. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I just want to use like HTML. This was back in like high school. So eventually I picked up some programming and I got excited about it. And that's actually what I prefer now. Kind of hate HTML and CSS if I'm being 100% honest. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and be sure to subscribe. Let me know if you got any questions. Follow me on Instagram and send them my way. See ya.